One of the things we have to do, and we've always done this, and we kind of lose track of it, in order to learn and remember, we have to have time to stop and think about things. Stop and think. You know, the, the, go sit under the tree and contemplate. We need some of that kind of time. And we live in a world where our ability to create data and information far exceeds our ability to review, understand, and recall information. That's true of the scientists trying to understand Alzheimer's with uh, all those neurons, all those synapses, all those neurotransmitters. It's a very tricky situation. The limitation we've all had for eons is it all goes through a system called memory. And memory has its limits. You know, the computer, like the telescope, expands the amount of data that you can manage. But we still go through the same memory systems we've had for millions of years. Our primary memory can still only hold about seven chunks of information, roughly a phone number. That means the moment things are coming in. Now, masterfully, the brain pulls information out of it, makes sense out of it, makes associations, and allows us to have continuity. Our attention must be refreshed frequently. You know, you can't really remember or learn very well once your butt starts squirming in the chair. You've got to get it up, move around a little bit, refresh your attention. That helps learning. Recall, you know, what do I have to do at 3 o'clock today? It takes more effort than recognition. That already says something about treating senior moments as well as mild memory problems. Don't trust your memory. Trust your calendar. Trust your to-do list. Trust your notes. Trust your structure. The exercise that I put you all through all the time, and I hope I still fool a few people, short-term memory is the culprit. Ten years before you have significant possible, possible, practical problems that are impacting on your life, the short-term memory will change. Short-term memory is in this name. It's not a time, it's a process. It's the ability of the brain to bring in new information. It's basically you learn something new here, you get distracted, and what you do in memory evaluation is come back and check it out. And I'm hoping we make these more available because Apple Table Penny Spell World Backwards doesn't really cut it. <laughs> so let's look at short-term memory. How do you mainly assess short-term memory? We're very verbal creatures. One of the best ways to check one of the short-term memory systems in the brain is a list of words. That's why the word lists come on. In fact, one of the things that I would challenge my colleagues to do is to make a rigorous memory test available to all of us so we can monitor our memory like we do our blood sugars. How do we know? I get so many people say, I'm scared to find out if I have Alzheimer's. Well, let's check your memory out because you can do something about it. Not everybody with memory problems gets Alzheimer's disease, and you can get a proactive plan and safety net. That's the bottom line. And the course will be smoother if there is progression. If there's not, the worst thing that you're going to do is carry a heavier calendar. <laughs> Have more reminder notes. So we often use lists of words, as you know. It's the source of new learning. And here's the rub with it. You can't exercise your short-term memory. It doesn't exercise up. It's not use it or lose it. It's the brain system to bring in new information. So how do we test it? Let me give you some words. I'm going to say some words to you after I'm done with this list. And I ask you, I want you to tell me back as many words as you can. You don't have to remember them in order. Just remember as many as you can. And I've stuck with my favorite list, so for those who know the punchline, please don't spoil it for other people. <laughs> Here we go. Candy. Sour. Sugar. Heart. Bitter. Tooth. Nice. Soda, honey, chocolate. And as usual, I hope that's enough words to make you think. 
There's a structure in your brain called the hippocampus. We just started testing it. And what you're doing now is saying, shut up and let me think. Because <laughs> your brain's trying to grab onto the information. And you've heard me talk about the one minute rule, which I'll get to in a minute. And you're saying, I'm not giving you a minute. Well, if I'm testing your hippocampus, I can't do that. Basically, again, short-term memory. Learn something. I hope you're still working on the list. Be distracted. I'm trying to distract you. Come back and see what's left. And what do we distract with? Sometimes it's things like spelling world backwards. Why would you want people to spell the word world backwards after giving them some words to remember? Interference. So you're blocking rehearsal. So I hope I've blocked your rehearsal long enough. What are the words on the list? Candy. Candy. Get me worried for a minute with that delay. <laughs> As a group, you guys are wonderful, as always. Now, here's the interesting rub, and this is the mistake often people make in memory assessments. Sometimes the brain's still storing, but it can't tell you. Because the memory is weaker, but there's still some strength to work with. So the way that you check that out is you do what's called a recognition test. Was tooth on that list? How many say yes? Was point on the list? No. How many say no? Was sweet on the list? Yes. How many say, people say yes? yes? How many say no? How many say I hate playing these games, please tell me? <laughs> Sweet's not on the list. You know, don't feel badly about that. If your brain works well, it forms a closed concept of sweet because that's the associate for all the words. That's what it's supposed to do. In fact, if you were terribly demented, your brain wouldn't close up those words and you wouldn't see the category. So that's always good. I know when I have bright audiences that they're doing well because they're fooled by it. And I've had people say, I've been to your talk three or four times and I still get fooled by it. Uh, I just give them a card and say, see you later. 